get drafted by Baltimore. <laughs> 26th pick overall. Yeah. Ozzie Newsom, the great general manager, calls you. Yeah. Says Baltimore is going to draft you. Yeah. And you said, Who is Baltimore? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I've never heard of Baltimore. What does that mean? <laughs> Did you know? Excuse my shirt, man. Don't somebody loan me that shirt. I, <laughs> And that's your grandma. Yeah, she's gone home. But look at that smile. Your grandmother there giving you a hug. Yeah. Affirmation. Yeah. You did something great. Yeah. And now you're going to the NFL, but you have no idea who Baltimore is. No logo. No colors. <laughs> we, we don't have nothing but white helmets. <laughs> and, and they're like, yeah, we, we, we the Ravens. We the who? And so me and John, and so that whole year, it's like that whole year, everybody's like, what you do? I'm play for Baltimore. We got a team. <laughs> and so from the first day, we stepped out there at practice, and I'll never forget it. Pepper Johnson was there. And so they gave me number 53. And he was 52. And he was 52. And they had me at weak side linebacker. Two days in the camp, I walk up to Marvin, and he was like, what's wrong? Marvin Lewis, Mar defensive Marvin Lewis, coordinator. Marvin Lewis, defensive I said, I can't play weeks out linebacker, and I cannot wear 53. He was like, why? I say, because middle linebacker is my position, and 52 is my number. And he said, really? I said, yes, Marv. And, and you're a rookie saying this. And they let Pepper go that day. And then and there was one guy that rookie year that changed my perspective on being a professional in the National Football League, and that was Demonte Dawson. He was the most dominant person that I had ever played with from a technical point and from strength. I had never seen, I didn't know what old man strength means. <laughs> Until that man grabbed me one day. And I, and I mean, he grabbed me one day and I'm chopping his hands and I'm like, they're not moving. <laughs> And the next play we come, he grabbed me again. I'm chopping him. I'm like, man, that's not still. And I went up to Marv and I said, Marv, how the hell do I beat Demond Dawson? He was like, the only way you beat Demond Dawson if you come up in here at 6.30 in the morning and learn how to beat Demond Dawson. And I said, 6.30 where? In the meetings? I said, I'll be there. And I went up in those meetings and uh, there was this play. Demond cut me off and I went back door and back door truly means the center goes front side. I went behind him, which means in my world, you cut the half of a defense. You split the defense in half, but the middle linebacker get cut out. And I thought I was quick enough to retract, but the angle he had took made me go another route. And Marvin stopped the film in the middle of the film room. And he cursed me for 15 minutes straight in front of everybody. And I'm sitting there like, I'm crushed. You know, I'm a rookie, I, you know, but I now, the starting backer, and there's no turning back. There's nobody else we're going to put in this position. And he goes off and goes off and comes to me after that and said, you know I had to do that, right? It's like, Mark, what do you mean you had to do that? Like, why would you do that to me, man? Like, that's freaking embarrassing. Like, I mean, Marvin was an aggressive defensive coordinator. He pushed you to your limits because we had so much of Cleveland culture, we had to clean that culture out. That culture out. And we had to kind of start over. We had to, be, we had to be respected enough to become that. So that's why Marvin done that to me in that meeting. 